$1.9 trillion, $1.9 trillion stimulus plan is what the House is looking to pass tomorrow through to pass on to the Senate. Now, as we already know, the political climate has changed since we have the new president, President, Obama, president Biden, who replaced President Trump. And also with that, the Democrats now control the House, the Senate, and the presidency. So getting those stimulus packages, the ones that we uh, struggled with in the past with the, I think, uh, $2,000 that was shot down by the House, because when President Trump was in the, uh, his last year to an office, he controlled the House, but he didn't have the Senate. So it was kind of a little battle back and forth. Now that you have the presidency, the House, and the Senate, you have so much power leaning towards the Democratic side. With all that being said, we have, I think this is round three of the stimulus package. And as investors, we want to know who's going to profit the most from the stimulus package. That's what we're going to talk about on today's episode. What companies stand in the way to profit the most from the potential stimulus package? I believe this package will get passed, except for one big hiccup that I see along the way that I think must be addressed. And I'm going to give my personal opinion. So y'all stay tuned. Y'all stay locked. As always, I'm... My name is Prince Dykes. I'm coming all the way live from the beautiful city and state of Denver, Colorado, via the also beautiful state of Honolulu, Hawaii. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and make sure you hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. Show us some support. Check us out on thinktech.com and also on YouTube and Apple Podcasts and wherever else you can get podcasts across the globe. So ladies and gentlemen, first in this episode, we're going to talk about where this $1.9 trillion is coming from and the ways we're going to benefit from it. So I've written it down here because this was a 591 page document. And of course, I didn't have time to go through it all. I did skim through it. If you want to check it out, it's on housebudget, housebudget.gov, housebudget.gov. That's where you can check out the entire 591 pages. Uh, you can skim over it. I like to look at some things, you know, I like, as you guys and girls know, tune into the show. I like to show everybody factual data, not data that comes from someone, what someone else said. I like to get it from the horse's mouth. So you want to get it from the horse's mouth. The 591 pages is on housebudget.gov or what they're proposing to pass on tomorrow, which is Friday. So it's 591 pages, $1.9 trillion in total. This is the biggest hiccup that I see with this bill. Not that I disagree with it. I think that um, America in general as a whole is not ready for it. So one proposal in there is to push minimum wage up to $15 on the federal level. Um, I don't know how that will roll out. $15 is great for high cost areas like uh, Hawaii and high cost areas like, like California, New York, you know, uh, major cities, those things are, are, you know, very big or whatever. But when you go down to smaller towns, you know, outside of Denver, let's say Colorado, outside of Colorado, or some of your rural areas in Mississippi and Alabama and Georgia and things like that, $15 an hour is a good bit of money. Even here in Colorado, that's a nice piece of change. So if you make minimum wage $15, what do you think the people who are already getting $15, what are they going to think? You know, they're going to say, well, hey, I was getting $15, now I'm getting minimum wage. I want more money. This person wants more money. This person wants more money. Um, I think that can start a, a bad trend. I think it has to be a better way of doing things, a better way of doing things like that. Uh, just putting a $15 limit across the board Yes, like I said for the first time, like I said earlier, it's great for major, major areas like Seattle and New York City and L.A. and San Francisco and, uh, you know, major areas. But what about all those rural areas in Nebraska and Wyoming, Montana? If I start a business now, I have to pay somebody. And let's say if I start a little dry cleaner here in Colorado or a little dry cleaner in Georgia and I have to pay all my workers $15 an hour just to answer the phone or just to take orders you know, that cuts into companies, small businesses, prices big time. So in the major areas, I can possibly understand, but um, with the smaller areas, small businesses, I think that's very bad for small business. That's my personal opinion. And I think that's gonna be a hurdle to get over in the Senate. When it gets over to the Senate, um, they said two Democrats had already forced their opinion or, or their opposition to the, to the stimulus package due to that. So what happens with these stimulus packages, people tell you like, oh, it's going to be $1.9 trillion and they load it with a bunch of other stuff on the inside of it. So for a prime example, you know, they're like, oh yeah, we're going to give everybody $1,400 checks, but also on the back end, we want to raise minimum wage. We want to do X, Y, Z. We want to donate money to aliens or whatever the case may be. So it's all type of stuff in that 591 page stimulus political game. 
Now, the next thing that I agree with, uh, unemployment, they're looking to extend unemployment to September. I can see that nobody has a problem with unemployment. Um, they're looking at sending $1,400 to households. Uh, $1,400 to households. If you're single, you make under seventy-five thousand dollars. They're going off of your 2019 or 2020 taxes. If you made under seventy-five thousand dollars, you're going to qualify for the fourteen hundred dollar uh, stimulus package. And also, if you're married and you're under one hundred and fifty thousand dollars combined, you're going to qualify for the stimulus package as well. So right there, you're going to be getting stimulus packages. Um, you know, nobody has a are going to be opposing. I think too much on fourteen hundred dollar checks. Now, what's going to be different with this one is it's $1,400 for every person in the household uh, for a family of four could receive up to $5,000 or something like that, $6,000. So that's great on that end. No qualms there. Um, the next thing they're looking at doing is a 15% a increase in food stamps. I don't know what's the deal with that. You know, um, fortunately in my life, I've, in my adult life and even in my childhood, I've never had to be on uh, food stamps. But um, from my understanding, I thought of food stamps, I don't see where the issue came in with uh, the SNAP program or a food stamp program increasing that in the budget. I don't understand where that's coming from, but they're looking to do that. Were people opposed to it? I haven't seen people opposing to it in a major way. Now, please excuse my um, ignorance if there is something going on with the SNAP food stamp program that I'm unaware of. But you know, from my understanding is that you get a set amount of money to buy groceries and an increase, I don't know what's the increase for. I don't know if people got hungrier, uh, uh, people started getting, people started to starve, coronavirus make you hungry or something, so you need more money or I don't know, but I don't know. So me, I look at that, I don't understand what's the deal with increasing uh, food stamp budgets for people who are already receiving it. But if more people need it, I understand. If more people, hey, I lost my job, I need a way to you know, find food or whatever, then I can understand that. Um, they're looking to put a lot of money into education systems. You know, they, they're donating billions of dollars to school states and schools to uh, accommodate them via the coronavirus packages or what's going on. For prime example, if you are getting, let's say if you're a school and you buy you, um, put in everybody, social distancing everyone, you may need additional staff or you may need bigger classrooms or you may need to spread people out in a distance. So they're giving billions and billions of dollars for people, I don't know, to make red tape hire additional staff or whatever. So a lot of money is going to be going to schools uh, to get kids back into schools. And they're putting a lot of money to uh, merge the gap, the gap that we had, the gap that we had for people, let's say, who didn't go, who haven't gone to school in over a year. So there are a lot of people who've been out of school for over a year. And yes, people have been doing online schooling and virtual schooling, but there's been a big gap there. So they're giving schools a lot of money to be able to, they're allocating them a lot of money to be able to accommodate them for their school. That's going to be, I can understand that. So for prime example, for the school, I can understand the school. Um, then they're doing housing aid. I'm not 100% sure of how this housing aid money works. I know the government has done a great job so far, starting March of last year when um, they put out, I think it was Secretary of Treasury who put out the, the forbearances. Uh, that's why we haven't seen, we see unemployment rise and be steady but we haven't seen a lot of people lose houses. We haven't seen foreclosures because of the forbearances. So I think it's a great job what they're doing with the forbearances. Now, the, the sad part I like to say here live on the air about unemployment that I'm kind of touching into it with housing. The sad part about unemployment is I think a lot of those jobs that have gone are not coming back. I think that people are waiting for certain things to come back to normal and not realizing that this is the new normal. Now, some things where they ramp up, yes, but I think that um, people are waiting to, hey, full swing, I'm going to be back into the to things or whatever. I don't think so. I think that um, I, I had a discussion on this in my podcast where we talked about everybody looks at the downside of what COVID did. Let's look at some of the benefits of COVID. What are some of the benefits COVID did? And one of the major ones was, one, it got rid of menus at majority of restaurants. You know, those, those big dinosaur menus they bring to you and every time the restaurant wanted to take something off the menu, they had to print new ones, or they wanted to add an item to the menu, they had to print new ones, they put on your table, then they got to take it away, they had to have, they had to have a menu holder. Now they're using QR codes. QR codes have been around for, um, I don't know, 10 years, almost a decade. So you take your phone, you put your phone over the QR code, and boom, there's your menu. If they want to update it, they can just update it online, and there you go, they don't have to worry about it. So that's one good thing that we experienced from uh, COVID-19, is that they got away, uh, you know, they got us away from our menus. The second good thing about COVID-19 is our ability to 
uh, get rid of, what else do we get rid of? Um, home offices, not home offices, but office locations. So we know there's so many office locations, you know, uh, pre-COVID, everybody had a nine to five. Majority of people had a nine to five. We went to big old office buildings and we were sitting there for eight hours to nine hours. Then we would go home. Um, now people are starting to realize, hey, you know what? You know, we haven't worked in an office in how long? So we don't need to, do we, do we really need to go back to the office? So many people have been working from home, spending more time with their children. Unfortunately, um, I don't think the education quality is the same. When I'm working from home, I don't really have the time to dedicate, you know, to help my son with school, but I can see where that was a positive. People get to spend more time at home. They don't have to commute back and forth. And I think going into the future, companies are going to, and companies and new companies are really going to look at buying office space. So buying office space, I think is going to probably be a thing probably of the past. All right. So that's the second thing there with uh, office space and things like that. The next thing we're going to look at um, we saw that COVID did was the positive side was tele telehealth, the telehealth industry. Look at the telehealth industry. Before I remember when I used to sit down and schedule to put my doctor, and maybe he may have, maybe it may take a couple of weeks, a month, and sometimes it could be two months or things like that. But now with telehealth, now I can just pick up the phone. Hey, I need to see my doctor. He calls me back within a week. Go on the phone, we talk, we go over everything, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes we may get on a video live and we may talk and boom, I hang up the phone. That's it. That's it. So this technology has always been here. Now COVID has ushered us into these things faster. So telecommunication has grown drastically well, through these times. So I think, so just look at some of the positive things of COVID as well. But anyway, anyway, what they're talking about um, in this bill, there's a lot of money being allocated to housing. There's a lot of money being educated to education. There's plenty of money going to be educated to more stimulus checks going out. Unemployment, unfortunately, we're giving people checks. I don't like you know, giving people checks on a long-term basis. I think we should be doing more to create jobs and things like that. Also, I almost forgot this when I have it written down in front of me, um, businesses, small business loans. So the PPP loans will be coming back in full force. So those are things we're going to be looking at as well. So we're going to be looking at full force in that. We're going to be looking at full force in housing, um, education, things like that. Now we're going to get into what everybody's tuned into is what companies stand to benefit from this $1.9 trillion. Because you got to think about it, ladies and gentlemen, once the Congress and signs off on this and the president signs off on it and we watch way for them, however they sign off on it, this money is going to go to somebody. Where's it going to go? This $1.9 trillion that uh, states and governments can apply for and grants, um, companies can apply for and grants money they're going to set aside for people. They're going to turn around and take that money. That money is going to go somewhere. So what companies are going to stand in line? So I want you guys and girls, we're going to take a quick break. And I mean a very quick break. We're going to take a quick break. And we're going to come back from that break. And once we come back from that break, we're going to talk about the companies that stand in line to benefit from the COVID-19 bill. At the beginning of this episode, we talked about the companies. Uh, we talked about what was in that bill. We went over a quick synopsis of what, in that, what was in the bill and my personal take on that. Now, after the break, we're going to get into the exact companies that are going to benefit from this bill. So Y'all stay tuned. See you after the break. And we are back here live on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Prince Dax, the Prince of Investment. 
If you didn't catch us before the break, we talked about this big, massive $1.9 trillion stimulus package that's looking to pass through the House tomorrow. And once it passes through the House, you know, you're going to have to go up with the uh, Senate. Then after the Senate, you're going to have the presidency, which is majority Democrat ran. So I think some form of the, the uh, House, not some form of the House, some form of this bill will be passed here within the next, probably by the end of this month. Um, we talked about what was inside of that. We talked about, let's do a quick synopsis, it's five, uh, 591 pages, you know, minimum wage, to talk about raising minimum wage to $1,500, $1,400 stimulus checks to households under $150 and single people and the $75, uh, $75,000, raising unemployment, 15% increase in uh, food stamps, giving a bunch of money to housing, uh, people who are struggling, for people who are struggling to pay their houses, things like that. I don't know exactly how that's going to be funneled down to people and the education program. Now we're in line to talk about the companies that are going to benefit from this $1.9 trillion stimulus package. So as you guys and girls know, this is not our first rodeo. This is not our second or third. This is our, uh, this is our third rodeo right now on the stimulus package or since COVID. And we did this back in 2008. If you recall, when we had the housing market crash, there were several stimulus packages passed by President Bush and President Obama. Now we've had two passed by President Trump. Now here's the first one by President Biden. So this is nothing new. The first thing I want everybody to be wary of, I think you're going to see a massive influx in gold and silver. Every time we have a massive stimulus package, you always see gold and silver going to run. The big reason why you see gold and silver going to run, because when we pass these massive stimulus packages, you got to ask yourself, where is this money coming from? This money is coming from the Federal Reserve who's printing the money, right? Uh, backed by the U.S. Treasury, say, hey, we'll pay you back later at a low interest rate, and we push this money out. Some people believe this would lead into inflation, hyperinflation, things like that, which is fine. But the downside to that is when we see so much cash being pumped, this is when you start to see people run to gold and silver and commodities. You might even see a little run in uh, cryptocurrency, which is like a new sector by itself. You've seen cryptocurrency has been on a massive run here um, so far. What a Massive upward volatile, volatile run. That's what I would like to say. Um, but cryptocurrency has been volatile since it came since its inception, you know, but 20 years ago or something like that. So when you look at cryptocurrencies, you have uh, cryptocurrencies, and I can see gold and silver may take off a massive run. I can't really say. I don't have a lot of historical data on cryptocurrencies, but um, in 2021, I'm very. Uh, I believe cryptocurrencies are here to stay, and this is why. Uh, when you have, it's a difference between having individual investors and institutionalized investors. Now, um, cryptocurrency has ramped up its institutionalized investors. Um, on my podcast, I talked about Square just put fifty million dollars into um, into crypto into Bitcoin back in twenty uh, last year. They put in fifty million dollars in the last quarter. You know, you talk, you've seen Tesla put one point five billion dollars in the um, Bitcoin. You're seeing more corporations. Are getting involved, PayPal and all these people, you know, Square owns Cash App. So you're looking at companies like Cash App and Tesla, all these massive billion dollar corporations are putting money behind it. And once you have institutional investors, that's when you hit a whole nother level of success. Let's let's segue here a little bit. Let's talk about it. Um, for a prime example, uh, let's take LeBron James, who's the greatest basketball player at this time, present time. I know those people may debate it, but let's say he's one of the top basketball players at this time. Why is he? Why does he have multi millions of dollars and you know has all this access and things like that? Because the platform he has institutions that are backing him to put him on a major platform to show his talents. It's the same thing when you see as when you take that to the investing world. There are people who have ideas and things like that, but until they get that backing or they get people that one or two people to believe in them, or companies or corporations, it changes everything drastically. Let's look at Netflix. Remember when Netflix very first came out? It was just a thing that was in PlayStations. If you didn't have a PlayStation, you didn't have Netflix. Then it went from PlayStation to Xbox. Then it went into Nintendo Wii. I want to say it probably started on the Nintendo Wii, but I'm not sure how it started on which gaming console, but it started out mostly on gaming consoles. Before, you know, before that, it had the vending machines, but it started coming into our households with gaming consoles. Then it did something when it got into our smart TVs. So, uh, um, when Samsung and all the major TV makers start to put Netflix chips inside of their um, Ro uh, Roku and all these companies start to put Netflix inside of our homes and start to come built in, that's when that's institutions that are backing you. 
So when you got those institutional investors, you see that now Netflix is in a position to have access to homes across the globe. So they have access to homes across the globe via our computers, via our gaming consoles, via our TV. You buy a TV, you pretty much got Netflix and all these other apps that are now built into it. So Netflix is one of the first ones to do it. If Netflix didn't have that access, they couldn't get on that platform, then yes, great idea. But guess what? It's hard to execute a good idea without having that access. Access is, it just made me think about reading one of the shareholders meetings, uh, shareholders reports from Coca-Cola. He spoke about accessibility. So when, um, by them, it's a lot of people that will probably will use a product. People don't have access to it. People are like, hey, I got to order it online. I got to wait two or three days. I, I do without it. But if they were in the store and they saw the product, they probably will buy it. So accessibility. So uh, by having the corporations get behind you, you increase your accessibility massively. And I think that's what crypto Bitcoin has done. So I think it is here to stay in some type of capacity. I'm not saying it's a great investment, a bad investment, but I think it's, I don't think it's an investment at all. I think it's completely speculative. You know, it's just like, hey, I'm going to put money here and see what happens because there's no financial data that anyone can look up. Are there 10 Qs, 10 Q reports, 10 K reports? Are we hearing from the CEO? Do I know how they're mining and who they're mining and what issues it could bring? I don't know. Right. So, no, since somebody can see that, then people are pretty much speculating. So, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. The first company, Walmart, Dollar General, Dollar General, Walmart, healthcare companies, Pfizer, and Gold. Walmart, Dollar Tree. Why do I say Walmart and Dollar Tree? We looked at the food stamps. If they talk about uh, investing food, you know, food stamp, increasing food stamps by 15%. You know, food stamps are not given on a, back in the day when I was a kid, we used to have these funny looking coupons. They look like coupons, look like funny looking coupons back in the day. You used to get a little booklet and you could use them to buy food. Those days are gone. Nowadays, your money is put on a card that only could be used to do certain things. Uh, the last time I heard, and if that's true, that money can only be spent at places like Walmart and Target and things like that, right? So those are the hard things about um, food and things like that, right? So that's uh, so I think food, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Dollar Stores would do well. I think a lot of those people that will receive money, they have to spend it on food and things like that. So, you know, that's why I think companies like Walmart and Target are going to see massive growth. Now, uh, we, we look at the, the housing aid. When you look at the housing aid and the education and things like that, I think we're going to see a mass spending in places like Home Depot and Lowe's. Home Depot and Lowe's. Why? I think people are going to be doing a lot of repairs. People are going to be receiving stimulus checks, spending a lot of time at home. So people are spending more money. Uh, schools are doing um, more repairs. When schools start to do repairs, they order supplies. The number two, number one and two suppliers of Home uh, Home Depot and Lowe's, that's what corporations and plumbers and people are going to go to install new things to the school to help out schools, right? So um, another thing, you know, uh, the next one is common, you know, uh, President Biden inside of that plan, he had a $20 billion vaccination pro program. Vaccination program. And you just saw President Biden at the Pfizer headquarters talking about the vaccination and how they're going to roll it out to America and help save people or whatever. So these uh, Pfizer's vaccinations are going to be, uh, I think Pfizer getting behind his vaccination. Um, I, I know it's another company that called uh, Mo, I can't even think of the name right now, but M O D E. Ron Motoring, I can't say the name right now, but that's another company. So healthcare, looking at the healthcare space, they put so much money in healthcare to allow people to get healthcare supplies. So healthcare supply companies are going to have a great year. Uh, they're going to benefit from the uh, from this uh, stimulus package. Healthcare supply companies, vaccination companies, Walmart, and Dollar Tree, and gold and silver. But a massive printing. When we do this massive printing, we always see a big hike and spike in running gold. And we always see people start to say, oh, look at gold, look at gold, take off and make a nice run. Right when the House or the Senate, right when the House or the Senate or the President signs um, another massive spending plan. So those are the companies I think that's going to be massively, uh, that's going to benefit from this. We're looking at Walmart. I say that again, Walmart, Dollar Tree, Target, and uh, Walmart, Dollar Tree, Target, and uh, Dollar General. Secondly, uh, healthcare supply companies. Um, I can't even think of the symbol right now, H-O-L-G-X. Don't quote me on that. But there's some healthcare supply companies that you can look up. I think they're going to see a massive uh, spending there. 
The next one is going to be Pfizer, of course, Pfizer uh, with the vaccination programs. We have massive vaccination programs. And then with this whole $1.9 trillion, we're turning on the printing machines again. I think this is going to be massive in the fact that, um, you know, people are going to run to gold because people are going to start to look at things, right? And the only hiccup I can see this getting caught up in the House, I think it's going to pass tomorrow in the Senate with no problem. I think it's going to run, run into a hiccup in the House because of that $15 minimum wage. And it's my belief that the $15 minimum wage will increase inflation or it will start to push up inflation on a massive level. So for that, on a massive level, you're looking at inflation. Why is that? It's simple. Let's say if I'm making $15. I think right now the minimum wage in Colorado is like $10. Let's say the person who's working for $15 right now, uh, let's say if I am a um, healthcare worker and I make $15 right now, I'm a CNA certified nurse's assistant, I make $15. Now minimum wage is $15. Now me as a certified nurse's assistant, what do you think I want? I want $20, right? Now, what do you think the person who was receiving $20, what do they want? Hey, I was an LPN. Why is this uh, nurse assistant getting what I'm getting? So I want $25. Then a registered nurse is like, hey, I was the one who was getting $20. I don't want $25. I need $30. So you guys kind of see how that goes up. So if you start off minimum wage at a certain level, if you give a guy who's working the fries at McDonald's $15, what about the person who's working the window and the, the shift manager and the shift lead, things like you got to give them more money as well. You got to get a manager more money. And where's that money going to come from? You got to ask yourself that question. So guess what? what the company is going to do to compensate. They're going to raise their prices. It's no longer going to be the dollar menu at McDonald's. It's going to be the $2 menu at McDonald's, right? Because they have to compensate. So now I'm making more money, but I'm spending more money at the same time. If I'm a property manager and I have to hire more people and pay more money, I'm going to raise the price. So I believe that that's where I can see a possible hiccup with the $15 on a federal level. I understand there's some places that need the $15, but what about those rural areas where $15 can go a long way? I think we should keep that in mind. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be my time today. I hopefully you guys and girls uh, enjoyed this episode here as we talked about the COVID-19 uh, relief bill that's looking to get passed here by the Senate and how yourself as an investor, some things that we can see. Even though we know the market has been getting slaughtered here the last couple of weeks, we keep a clear head. You know, I'm a very optimistic bull type investor. So I'm always going to keep looking down the road. But hopefully, ladies and gentlemen, you guys and girls got something out of it. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button if you haven't done so already. Also, go ahead and make sure you check us out on all our platforms, social media platforms. And until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else crazy you see me do around the globe, my name is Prince Dykes. Peace, be safe. I'm out.